we are in Crum, West Virginia at the McCoy Family Cemetery but this is a cemetery that we've never taken you guys to before uh, those of you who follow our little adventures are familiar with the Hatfield McCoy feud in the 1800s um, as you can imagine you know there are tons of relatives and descendants from both sides in the area several Hatfield and McCoy cemeteries actually you know exist throughout the area this is one here that most have never seen in real life or on YouTube and most likely probably never will again because of its extremely remote location well I've made it to the top of the hill and not too out of breath so I guess that's not too shabby for an old dude huh okay we're all set up I guess got my junk laid over there had to peel my hoodie it's a little bit too warm we're out in a t-shirt today y'all middle of February early February 6th I think and I'm out in a t-shirt imagine that but anyway I'm gonna start here on the end like I said kind of work my way around the front back down this way and then over the top of the hill anyway uh, this is a double Ed Harmon 1877 to 1951 and Willa Wilda Harmon 1882 to 1977 she had to wait for a while on him didn't she this is Naoma Francis Reed March 3rd 1884 to March 16th 1954 a devoted wife and loving mother and this is right directly behind her it says William Henry Reed January 28th 1886 to September 24th 1961 he was beloved by God and man. That's saying something, isn't it? You know, you've got to be a pretty good guy to, you know, for somebody to put something like that on your stone. Got it. Yeah. Now, this is one of them. This is a later one. Uh, this is one of the family, though. Ireland McCoy, Big I, September 25th, 1954 to July 27th, 1997. You will never be forgotten. It says O. Franklin. Martin, November 13th, 1949 to February 14th, Valentine's Day in 1993. And Nola M. Martin, May 12th, 1953, and no death date. So hopefully Nola's out there watching our video right now. I like that when, you know, you get those every now and then, you know, somebody will, hey, you... You know, you videoed my grandmother, my mother, my whatever. You know, we get that a lot. You know, I've never seen my grandmother's grave until you posted it. You know, that's it's, kind of heartwarming, you know, to hear that kind of stuff. You know what I mean. But, uh, McCoy. Shirley McCoy was a teacher. And Clarence E. was a coal miner and electrician. Uh, Shirley was born... February 26th, 1933, and passed away October 12th, 22. 
It was a couple years ago. And Clarence was born March 9th, 1926, and passed away in 1988. Now here is one of the, this is one of the ones that I was looking for today. Y'all know how I am about military grades. This is Clarence E. McCoy, Sergeant U.S. Army, World War II. Born March 9th, 1926, and passed away March 7th, 1988. I bet you he could tell you some stories, couldn't he? Says Pawpaw, right by a stone. I bet you money Papa could tell you some stories. This is Dennis Lee McCoy, born October 28th, 1953. It says he's a coal miner and electrician, father of Clarence Lee and Dennis Lee Jr. Look at that. Look at this headstone, how beautiful it is. It's a coal mine. It's a fairly modern coal mine, electrical wiring, going back into the mine. Something this man probably saw a whole lot of. He was an electrician in the mines. A real good chance. This is Chester Lee McCoy, Papaw. January 24th, 1934 to August 16th. 2013. This is London B. McCoy, April 18th, 1892 to October 27th, 1958. Lucy B. McCoy, November 9th, 1899 to March 6th, 1976. Now look at the back of that one. That's the back of the one with the coal mine. Look at that. It's a whole farm scene. Is that not beautiful? Barns and that is beautiful. I wonder how long those last when you do those. That is really beautiful. There are a train coming. Heard chickens a little while ago. Roosters going at it over the hill here. Okay. This is Dwight David McCoy. G. Paul, I'm assuming great grandpa. September 4th, 1953 to November 23rd, 2012. Well, some of these, some are obviously pretty recent. There's one of the older Ireland's. This is Ireland McCoy, born April Fool's Day, April 1st, 1898, and passed away June 9th, 1963, and there's a picture of Ireland McCoy. Look at this one. Where do you see this picture? This is Melinda McCoy says together at last at the bottom but look here at this picture look at them curls look at that grin i kind of get the feeling that melinda was probably a fun person to be around don't you i mean just based on just off of her picture she looks like somebody you want to meet 
this is Angel Prince. Oh, I see. Born in 1981 and passed away in 1981. As you can see, it's just a, a flat, basically piece of concrete with some steel inside. And you can see where it says, Baby McCoy Babies. It doesn't have names. It just says M-C-C-O-Y-B-A-B-Y-S. Babies. Hmm. Now this is infant daughter. Huh. They have the dates backwards, but uh, it says McCoy May Rose, August 21st, 1938, April 10th, 1937. Uh, we've got the dates backward, but it's a it's an infant. It says infant daughter of Lucy in London. Now this one is just a stone with a hollowed out. What does that say? Uh, T R. N D A looks like could be Amanda. Baby Amanda, Miranda, and John. I already showed you those, but this is Miranda C. McCoy, June 6th, 1867 to May 19th, 1959. And of course, Rose's marker. She isn't here. She's at Fairview. But in a way, in a way, her memory's here now. Right between her parents. Now, like I said, this is John B. McCoy. March 22nd, 1858 to May 30th, 1927. Couldn't remember if I actually said their dates or not, so I figured I'd just do it again just to be sure. Okay. Got a little new information. The gentleman there that's just leaving, and he'll be on the time lapse. I asked him if he wouldn't be on video. He, he didn't want to. He politely declined. But uh, we did talk for about 20, 30 minutes. And <laughs> he gave me a lot of information about the old graveyard here. Uh, apparently, this marker here for the two babies is the same as this one. And the dates... Or that's that one and the 37 is this one so that explains that also he is the guy that just came up is the grandson of John B McCoy so <laughs> this is this is his family right and he was telling me about this one and that one and this lady right here this Rebecca Parsley in she was born in October 30th, 1848, and passed away March 9th, 1887. And he was telling me that the reason she's here is because apparently the Parsley family owned hundreds of acres through here back in the early 1800s. And that's how she wound up here. Also, also... Look right here. I don't want to mess with it or walk on it or anything. You see that? Cross in there. That's Melinda McCoy's and Ireland McCoy's son. His ashes were just scattered on top of his parents' grave this past fall. So that's that's what the crosses are. That's their son's ashes on top of the graves. And the the G Paul was a nickname. Oh see I almost stepped on it. There's more ashes right there. Almost stepped on it. Be careful about that stuff. And the uh, G-Paw and P-Paw, 
those were nicknames. So, you know, that was Grandpa and that was Peepaw. So, yeah, it's kind of strange, you know, you, you come out and you do these and, you know, it's not the first time, you know, I've run into that before, you know, people curious what you're doing, you know. But once you explain, you know, what you're doing and you're documenting, you know, their their family for posterity, you know, for future generations and all that sort of stuff, it's always the same thing, you know, they well this is such and such and this is such and such over here and she was you know and he was just telling me stories about the family and stuff like that for example miranda miranda c mccoy rosa's mother right john's john's wife okay she was uh, her maiden name was james now we knew that uh heather and i we we knew that but what we didn't know <laughs> y'all heard of jesse james she was Jesse James' cousin. And there was a story that we did not long ago about, you know, it wasn't about Jesse James robbing the, the bank in West Virginia, but it was mentioned in our video. You know, we had mentioned about him robbing, you know, the bank in West Virginia. Anyway, when he robbed the bank, robbed the bank according to family, a family lore, here we go again with the family lore, but, you know, hey, it's family lore. We, you know, we say that if it's family lore. If it's not sure, we say that. If it's fact, we'll say that too. But anyway, um, supposedly, according to, you know, her grandson, right? Her her grandson uh, says that uh, when Jesse James, after he robbed the bank, before he headed back to Missouri, he hid out at Miranda's house for a solid week. So I thought that was really interesting. And thank you very much, Mr. McCoy very much appreciate the information but uh he gave me a lot of really interesting information about the graveyard itself uh like for instance her son um i think he said his name was james but i'm not you know don't quote me on that anyway he said that his his son james said that when he was a little boy that their son james would come up here and bring a push lawnmower up this mountain and maintained this graveyard till he was well up into his 70s. Now, guys, you can imagine pushing a lawnmower up here. Now, just imagine bringing one up here. Not just cutting the grass. Just getting the mower up here is going to be a nightmare. But that's the way it was done, you know. West Virginia, you know, well, I guess all across the country, you know, it was a different time, you know, just a few short decades ago. It was a whole different world. But he mentioned that there were several, like right in through here, where they found, they bought, the family chipped in and bought a bunch of these for the old stones. The ones that they knew were the ones that had initials on them. They made these little stones. This one says M-E-C, which is the letters that was on the stone. But that doesn't mean that we know who M-E-C was. It just says M-E-C. And this one, unknown by that little rock. Unknown. Unknown. Uh, there's several dips in the ground here you can tell you can tell there are graves like right, this one you can see the remnants of a field stone right there and unknown so the family has came up here and has done their very best they've done a good job to document what they know and put something out as a remembrance for the ones they don't know. And that's pretty cool. Another unknown by a rock. This here, Ida Harmon, 1882 to 1900, and Cecil Harmon, 1900 to 1900, stillborn, was children of the Reeds right over there, the very first two that I showed you. This is their children back here. This one says TC. 
you just you can see the remnants of a T and a C and they made the little stone, little marble stone with TC on it. And we're about there. Unknown. And like I said guys, this is a McCoy graveyard, so most of these most of these anyway are McCoys. They will be McCoy family related in some way. There's a few that aren't though. This one says IH. I can't see anything on the rock. Okay, there it is. Unknown. KC. see the K C in the original stone right there but it's almost gone field stones don't weather that well do they kind of look at this this is kind of suspicious you see these two right here right look how close they are there's maybe 16 inches between the two that usually signifies one of two things either that's just a rock well, this is a child buried next to a mother. And I've seen a few of these. I've read about them. That back in the day, you know, parents, mothers dying in childbirth. I've heard, you know, I read it once or twice that this was done back in the day that they would put the mother there and put the baby, put the stone right beside of it. You know, it's all it's speculation. But it's speculation based on Based on old stories, I suppose, is probably the best way to look at it. Best way to say it. This one is unknown. That one is just a rock. No name or initials. Rock. Rock. Unknown. And there's several more. All throughout the inside of the fence, inside the perimeter. And you can see the black with well, the forest fire burned all the stuff over there, burned fence posts and everything. But he said there's another graveyard out this way. We read that there was three here. And I was talking to the gentleman that was just up here. He said there's one out here. And he said there's an old Confederate grave out here, an old Civil War Confederate grave out here. So I guess that pretty much covers this one. So I guess while I'm here... I'm going to take a quick peek, grab my junk real quick, and head down that way and see what I can find. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I think I may have just found an old lost Civil War graveyard. He was saying that, uh, that there was at least one confederate soldier buried down here in these trees and I can see there's one there's one right there there's two more right there by that fork tree I can see two right there I see a big dip right here I see a dip right there I see a dip over the hill okay I'm going over the fence I got a barbed wire fence here I don't know if y'all can see the wire or not, but... And this tree has fell across the fence. Brought down vines and all this kind of stuff. Had to climb over some barbed wire fence just a minute ago. But, ouch! But it's okay. The owner said I had permission, so that's that. We didn't hurt the fence. We just climbed over it. Kind of like this one. Mm, let's not get nothing caught we want to keep right <laughs> it is barbed wire lord the stuff i go through guys <laughs> but now look at this now this is unique this is a little bit different y'all and you can see where the forest fire has cleared the brush 
and that makes a big difference. Now if I see any initials, I mean these are rocks standing up. This is obviously a graveyard. There's definitely one right there where those trees are. You can see the dip over here, there. What's this one? There's letters on it. I can't read them, but there's letters on it. Guys, this is something. We found something. I see Z. Zeke. I'm not sure. That is wild. This is way out. I mean way out in the middle of nowhere. Up on the side of a mountain. And this one's standing up by the tree. M. No. I'm not sure. No name that I can discern. But that is definitely not natural. Rocks don't stand themselves up like that. Kind of move around a little bit here and see if I can get a better look what I've got. I see something there. I swear it looks like a couple of them right there. They'll be on a hill, they tend to, you know, as the hill moves, the grave tends to sink over time. I'm definitely 100% seeing marks where graves are. And I'll just be honest, this is not a documented site. This is not a documented Civil War site by any means. I swear it looks like some of them. Well, if they were carved, they'd be worn by now for sure, wouldn't they? I'll tell you, the forest fire helped. You can see forest fire and winter helped a lot. There's no way you'd get in here in the summer months. There's another one. Come on, baby, show me some initials. Put everything back where I found it. No dead turtle. What's left of one? Looks like something got a hold of him, don't it? Like a coyote. Coyote or something got a hold of him. There's a stone. Okay, now this right here may look like a grave, but it isn't. That round, there's a big tree that was here that has fallen that way. You see the mound? That was the root ball right there. This has fallen 40 years ago, give or take, something like that. Left the hole, and you can see where the root ball, the bump, where it was. So that is a down tree. That is a grave. That right there is 100% a grave. That's 100% a grave. This is 100% a grave. This is a graveyard. Wow. There's two. I'm guessing that's headstone, footstone. Right here. Come on, come on. Let me see some initials. Aha! There's an O. Aha. Uh -huh. Proof, folks. This is not just random rocks that just happened to miraculously decide to stand up on their own. They did not gain sentience and stand up on their own. <laughs> this is definitely something. Alright, where's the down tree? We're going to get back across the fence. 
still got another graveyard up here to go find. See, look at that one. You see the letters? Can you see, can you guys see that? There's something, something carved in this rock. But I can't read it. It's way, way, way too old to read what it says. Someone from a really, really, really long time ago, guys, is buried right at my feet. There's another one. Let me go under the vines. Big old grapevine there, look at that. Look at that beast. Okay. We're back to the down tree and now we got to get back across the barbed wire without losing anything I wanted to keep if you know what I mean hey we got over the log what is that I just happened to see something sticking up okay the survey stake right there kind of curious what that was just happened to see a little splash of color a little red but look at this what I'm going through to get here hang on you got to go around this around this tree down this way luckily like I said the forest fire has really cleared the ground for me well that came in handy if I'd searched this any other time of year there's no way I found them I just happened to come at the right time there's one right there I would missed that one there's one right there <coughs> okay climbed over the fence over the tree and we gotta go through the weeds look here there's another one one right there and that one has carved you can see the back side is definitely carved something there's one sticking up right there too i didn't come up far enough on the other side of the fence i'm seeing more there's one right there hello what's this oh hello that's something we got something guys Oh God, yeah, we got something. We definitely got something. Hang on. <clears throat> wow. Thomas Copley, born June 9th, 1802, died April 1st, 1826. Wow. And there's some more down here I can't read. I wonder if this might be... No, 18, no 1826. Now that is a find, guys. We find out who Thomas Copley is. We got a name now. And he is well off of the graveyard. The graveyard's way over there. This is right beside these other markers. There's one. There's one. There's one. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it changes nothing. I know that. You know, it doesn't bring him back or it doesn't make me any richer. It doesn't make you guys any, you know, happier or whatever. But it still makes me happy to to have found that that is awesome okay i'm gonna head back i'm almost back i got one more fence to climb back over to get back over to the regular graveyard to the middle one the mccoy one while i was at earlier and i'm gonna go out here follow the other ridge line out that way he said there was another old graveyard out there so I'm gonna go see if I can't find that one too while I'm here. This has been a very productive trip. 
absolutely all right another another fence to climb over with barbed wire yay mm. gently 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 here <laughs> all right okay no no parts on the fence we're good <laughs> <laughs> All right. okay i got me a fresh battery sunset and i'm losing daylight i gotta get going don't i uh i'm back at the edge back in the corner of the mccoy graveyard we're just finished up here and this is what's back here uh, uh, got another fence Another metal fence to climb over. This one's not barbed wire though. I figured I'd start the recording here and kind of show y'all some of what it takes to find some of these old graveyards. At least in West Virginia anyway. All you people living out in flat country <laughs> Which I guess if it's overgrown, it's overgrown, whether it's steep or not, huh? Thorns keep grabbing at my hoodie, grabbing my sleeves and my hood. All right, over the big tree. Now, well, we're on the other side. Now, the McCoy gentleman that I met earlier, he said it was out this way. He said, right about where that big tree canopy is. Maybe a little bit past it, so. We're on the hunt. Again. Three hunts today. I like that. I like getting out here and I see it. I love getting out here. Getting back in these old mountains. And just make a day of it. See what I can find. And bring y'all along. I see an old one right there. I think he said Fitzpatrick family, but I could be wrong about that. That's a crab tree. Wow. I see several. Man, this is really back in the. This is really back in it. We'll just leave it at that. I see one, two, three, four, five. Uh, well, okay, I see five right off. Uh, we'll take a look. This is, uh-oh. Okay, look at the badge. You see it? Now this is usually of course, 1915 death date. Anthony Crabtree, June 1st, 1881 to November 17th, 1915. Wow, look at that one. You can tell there's one nine nineteen ten is what that one says one nine one zero. Okay, get around the trees here. Wow, talk about a peaceful place, though, brother. You don't get much more peaceful than this. This is, it is a Fitzpatrick. I see a couple. Minerva Fitzpatrick, born December 12th, 1883, and died April 19th, 1910. Gone, but not forgotten. No, Minerva, you're not, honey. You are most certainly not forgotten. And you won't be. 
We can help it, you won't be anyway. Look at this one. How beautiful that is. The cross. I don't know if y'all can see the cross. And little designs carved into it. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. W.F. Fitzpatrick. January 24th, 1841 to August 20th, 1921. His soul are vast. His souls are vast. His, hang on. F-O-I-L-S are vast. His works are done. He fought the fight. The victory's won. It's cool. That is cool. This is... Mm. Look at the S's. See the S's backwards? You see that in a lot of older graves as well. Some of it, um, you know, Russian, uh, European influences, that sort of thing. Sometimes people couldn't spell. You know, that's just... I've seen that a lot. I've seen... You know, things misspelled on... But that's not, you know, that's not the family. It's whoever, you know. Uh, this is... At rest. Roscoe Fitzpatrick. Born 528... 1871. And look how they made the one. Looks like an L. Died 830... 1961. Huh. One right there. I don't know if y'all can see the dip in the ground. Right there. And there's another dip over here. Uh, there's one right there. One right there. So there's probably... I mean, if they're down there and they're up here, typically they'll be in the middle as well. So this is probably filled with unmarked graves back here on this semi-flat and you can see there's an old fence old fence line there he is so you can see fence post fence post fence post going out there following the edge of the mountain edge of the ridge line we'll look just take a look and see what we see I don't see any more headstones you know man-made headstones see a few rocks here and there that could be but then again could be could be natural as well so I try to try to not assume too much but yeah I see a couple dents down there I guarantee you this whole place is filled with unknown graves and that was pretty common back in the day you know, the, the grave markers didn't really start becoming popular until much later, much more recently. But there's a few out here, and I'm assuming, I'm going to go ahead, I'm not assuming squat. I'm just going to go ahead and say there's a bunch out here. I can see one right here as well. There's one that's knocked over. Hang on. I just happened to notice that. P C. So this tree, 50 years, 60, 70, who knows? It's a big old tree there, isn't it? Uh, there's deer tracks all over the place. And the guy that came up, Mr. McCoy, he said that was basically what he was curious about. He said they get a lot of people that want to come up on the graveyard and poach during the winter. Oh, he was kind of curious what I was doing up here. But once I told him, you know, we were all good. And, you know, we were actually distant relatives. So, you know, good to meet him, right? 
It's always good to meet a long lost relative you didn't know you had. I'm got to do that today too. Now that, I'm not sure if that's an old grave mound or not. Because of where it's at, there's no dip directly adjacent. So usually when a tree flips, it'll cause that big dent in the ground. That don't have one. Just a extremely out of place mound. Man, these thorns really grabbing on, ain't they? It's a thorny place, that's for sure. Tricky to get through, even in the winter time. You imagine trying to come up here in the summer and everything's growing and green ain't no way you wouldn't even find this place okay between the two little ones here i just look at all the deer tracks they're all over the place all over so when i first came in i saw six or seven at the bottom of the hill when i first pulled in and we're back to the big tree. And get down here where we can just step across. Wouldn't do that in the summertime either. Step across something like that and land on top of a copperhead. <laughs> All right, get through the thorn little patch here. Ouch. Thorn patch. And we're back to the fence again. I climbed all over a lot of fences, seems like today. <laughs> uh, looks like I got done just in time. Looks like a sun has about 30 minutes. And she's going to drop behind the mountains on me. The leaves sound good, don't they? It sounds very... I don't know, relaxing or something. Some crunchy leaves. And ah, we are back where we started earlier. I'm gonna call this a good day. We just like to come out and document this stuff and share it with you guys. So anyway, I guess I need to shut up and get out of here. It's getting late on me. Uh, you guys, y'all have a really good day. Thank you for coming along. We very much appreciate you. And we will see you next time on the Hillbilly Files. Leo out.